expectation is pretty high when you get a little older, so you may want to choose a, a easier way to get from one point to another. But for those that are in shape, uh, running is absolutely wonderful. Okay. Well, now, um, I don't know if you were here uh, just a little bit ago. We were uh, listening to a couple interviews with the uh, uh, celebrity um, Biggest Loser contestant yes. uh, right here from Pasadena. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you are that, you know, when you are morbidly obese or, um, you know, have that much weight to lose, is, is running the best first step to take? Are there other things you should do before that to kind of get your body ready for that much momentum or, you know, I guess weight? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, first, I think, is cognitive behavior because he went into, he lost weight and he lost weight several times. I think he lost 100 weight, uh, 100, over 100 pounds uh, at least three times. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, his behavior, it was something inside of him that he had to change. So I would say first get your goal. Uh, in mind your focus, uh, get your head straight first, mm -hmm. and then let your body follow. Your your body is just uh, uh, pretty much a, a slave to uh, the thoughts uh, that you have. So you can actually have a gastric bypass, you can lose weight, but if your mind hasn't changed, you're gonna repeat that same thing. Dr. Z, have you always, have you always been fit? Um, pretty much. I remember my thighs rubbing together in high school, but <laughs> other than that, yeah, I've been fit. What motivated you to, to maintain this healthy lifestyle? I, I think looking at um, uh, individuals in my family and my friends and people that were close to me, uh, people that died, uh, people that I really loved as far as entertainers that uh, died from preventable diseases, all of that uh, really uh, uh, became frust frustrating to me. So I had to convert my frustration to my inspiration to uh, help more patients, to get more people to uh, find a better way to be healthier. And it's very difficult, I must say, in a society that propagates uh, commercial foods and uh, easy to go snacks of pizzas and sodas and so forth. It's very difficult, but I feel that we're getting back to a more natural um, way to select foods and also to understand purposeful eating. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm from the University of Michigan and just recently, ah. um, unfortunately, one of our uh, old star uh, players, uh, uh, Tractor Trailer, as he was yeah, known, sorry, uh, passed away. And, you know, he, he, here's this guy who's uh, playing sports, you know, active, mm -hmm. but is still not losing the weight. And unfortunately, he died of a heart attack mm -hmm. at a young age of 34. Yes. Um, yeah, that hit me uh, very close. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, so I've been okay. up to the campus. It's gorgeous. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Absolutely. Um, yeah, blue. when I read um, uh, about Tractor's uh, life, uh, that really, really uh, got me. That hit, that's another thing that inspired me. I'm like, okay, got to get out here and do it. So that's what I'm doing. I have uh, my book uh, that will be released uh, on the 19th of uh, May. Uh, it's called uh, What Should I Eat and When Should I Eat It? Okay. Well, we're going to talk to you a little bit more in a second, but okay. um, talking about people who are just going to do it and get it done. We have, a, there's a new uh, event with the Pasadena Marathon, the Wheelchair Stroll, and CCN's LaKendra Tux is at the start of the wheelchair race. LaKendra, what do you have for us? All right, thanks, Anita. I should mention that right here behind us, we've got some 5K runners that are already finishing up. Uh, nobody is letting the rain stop them. Um, and I'm here with Jack Zorakjian, he is coordinator for the wheelchair portion of this year's Pasadena Marathon. Uh, Jack, this is the first year that at Pasadena has speech. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, it is. It's the first year, and um, uh, the Pasadena Marathon Committee and the board had decided to um, have a wheelchair stroll section. It is a stroll, not a wheelchair race, so it is a separate than a race even though there would be a, uh, whoever wanted to race, whether it's the marathon or the 5K or any other event, would have, it's a separate event. So um, it was just to, to, to raise awareness um, that the marathon is here for everyone and at any level of patient they'd be able to. So this is just yet another um, uh, way for individuals who are not able to participate in any of the 5K or the 10K or the full marathon to leisurely 
and participate in the marathon overall. And now, and, uh, you know, with this this type of weather, um, how how would that affect uh, wheelchair participants? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be pretty tough. Um, we uh, we're hoping that uh, the wheelchair participants would still be willing to participate. It's pretty raining our, out out there, so um, we'll see. We'll, we'll just uh, take. We'll just uh, we'll just see how it works out. Now I know that the marathon tends to have some. I don't know what you guys have done to the rain gods, but it, it seems I've, I've heard that like every year it rains. So we definitely want to see the wheelchair portion come back next year. But how are we going to, in the future, tackle the rain? Well, I, I don't know how we can uh, tackle the weather. Uh, that's kind of out of our uh, reach. Or but what we can, what, uh, you know, whoever is uh, watching this program, they can get the word out. Next year, for sure, we'll have a wheelchair stroll. Um, and hopefully we'll have more participants and, and uh, the weather would be nicer so everyone can enjoy it a little more. That's right. We won't have to blame it on the rain. All right. Thanks. Back to you in the studio. Well, I, you know, I think one of the most exciting things about this Pasadena Marathon, I'm so excited to see the wheelchair race and the 10K, just that it keeps growing, keeps getting bit better, keeps attracting new participants, um, and, and it really just shows that all of us, no matter what, can do something. We can, we can walk a 5K, we can have our kids do the kids run, we, you know, we can just get involved. Even if it's running the marathon, you don't have to run. In, in fact, if you heard Yolanda Holder earlier, she she power walks the whole thing. She holds the Guinness Book of World Records, a world record holder for um, running marathons, but she's like, you know, I'm a power walker. They just don't rec recognize power walkers, so they say I run, and you know, close enough, she probably runs fast or walks faster than me uh, when I'm running. But we're going to go back to Dr. Z. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, sticking around and, and telling us more because, you know, uh, so much about us getting healthier. Um, there's that balance with, with food and exercise. I've had this debate with people of, you know, sometimes even for me, when I start exercising, I get so gung-ho, but then I feel, well, I'm exercising, so I can eat whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's a responsibility for eating ice cream and candies and all of that, but <clears throat> what happens is that we overdo it. We eat too much of the things that are unhealthy and not enough of the things that are healthy. But you don't want to have a bland, uh, just a monoscopic life. There are things that you're going to eat that are reward foods. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is the key word that you said, balance. Not to overdo it. Enough to satisfy that appetite and, you know, pretty much. Uh, I think that that should do you well. Dr. Z, I have a question, because Taco Bell and other fast food restaurants, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, yes. they now have the fresco menu, so you can get a bean burrito and instead of cheese and sauce or whatever, it, it's fresh salsa. Is that a good step to move towards uh, by getting those healthier options, or should we just start adding more healthy foods from the get-go? Well, I would say relatively speaking, because if we're using Taco Bell... I know, I thought you were <laughs> you going know. in a different oh, direction. Yeah. <laughs> if we're using Taco Bell, if, if you eat eating Taco Bell, yes, that would be a step up from their regular menu, but I would say stay away from any of those foods because they are just, uh, they're saturated with all of the things that you don't want to put in your body because they have to look right, they have to smell right, the touch must be right, and so forth. They appeal to your five senses. And that's all health. those chemical processes, yeah. I guess. Yeah, play food. Okay. All right, well, play well, food. <laughs> well, now tell us a little bit more about, uh, you know, with the gastric bypass, because I know with so many people, it's such a challenge to lose weight, and they just think that maybe it would be just simpler to go in, have your stomach stapled. Yeah. Um, is it simple? Is it, a, is it an answer for everyone? Well, no, there, there are different types. There's the sleeve, the duodenal switch, there's a lap band, there's a ruin Y, there's a phobie pouch, there's different techniques, different surgeries. They don't serve each individual the same. Uh, they're not equal, and they come with many downsides. Again, if you don't have your mind made up to stay slim and to stay, stay healthy, uh, the, the person will repeat those very unhealthy uh, habits all over again. You know, I've seen people, it's celebrities, like Randy Jackson, didn't he have the, the lap band procedure or one of those? Gastric bypass. Yeah, yeah, and he seems to have gotten a little heavier over the years. Is that just part 
of having that surgery is that you return back to your normal size? Well, what happens again, even with the lap band, even with the gastric bypass, you can uh, gain weight. Okay. Well, we want to thank you so much. We could keep asking you questions. It's so interesting. Yes, it's uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, hopefully you'll stick around uh, and be part of this coverage. Yes, it's going to be fun Well, today. thank you for joining us. Well, um, earlier this week, Nikki Ibarra was talking to the Pasadena Pacers, which have been such a big group um, in helping promote the Pasadena Marathon and the training. Uh, let's look at one of the Pasadena Pacers that Nikki talked to earlier in the week. Your injury and your yeah, story. Yeah, um, and in February, I just uh, did my first 50 miler. Uh, it took me 12 hours to complete it, but my my rule is always slow and steady gets you done. Now, what goes into a day, uh, normal training with the Pacers? You run, where do you run, and you know, does it get easier for you, or does it, you know, yeah, you steady? We go by uh, the rule of three runs a week. Uh, our training runs are normally during. Uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, we pick two days during the week and then the Saturday is our long training run. Uh, and we shoot for maybe choosing a marathon and in between that marathon will extend our, our mileage. Um, but it's about three day training week. Now, is this your first marathon, passing the marathon that you're running? Uh, this is going to be my, I want to say 12th. Wow, now does it get easier or? No, no it doesn't. Every marathon is different. Um, Pasadena, like Ann Rogers, was our first last year and uh, it's special because it, it's our home turf. And so um, this is this is gonna be a good, a good and special marathon for me. Now, how will you be prepping for Sunday's race on, let's say, Saturday night? I'm actually running Palos Verdes Marathon on Saturday. So you're gonna be running and then running back? Yeah, now, back to back you, marathons. When are you gonna ice? Um, legs. <laughs> right. Well, Palos Verdes is right by the beach, and so we go straight from the finish line into the water. Uh, and the challenge will be to actually to rest between races. Doing a 50 miler was great, but there were consecutive 50 miles. Uh, this one, the rest period, will be my challenge, and just recovering for Sunday morning. Now, so is this the first time you'll be doing a marathon back to back? Back to back, yes. Now, yeah. how are you preparing mentally? Uh, mentally, I'm there. It's, it's. I think the you you hope that the body holds up and uh, staying to 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 what I believe in, the just slow and steady and covering the miles is is it's going to get me there. Great. Well, thank you very much, Will. And Sunita, back to you in the studio. Well, it is very exciting. A lot of the racers are coming in with the 5K, uh, the bike uh, race. There are a lot of people finishing up. In fact, we are waiting uh, to check in with Mayor Bogard. Um, I understand that he's probably finished the race at this point. Um, from what I've heard, he's very quick and one of the top finishers. So we are looking forward to being able to connect with the mayor. Um, Nally Tavidian is, is, will be talking to him shortly. Um, you know, this is you know just an exciting race Anthony mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what do you think about you know all of the different events that are a part of this marathon well I think that it's fantastic that they include so many different kinds of exercises first the 5k the 10k bicycling and the wheelchair race um, but one of the reporters she even mentioned well we keep getting cursed with rain and rain is only good for those people who are actually running or walking in the race and it makes it tougher for other people who are doing the bike race or people who are in the wheelchairs so it'll be interesting to see how this uh, gets played out over the next few years because I know the mar marathon will be coming back again so um, I hope that we have better luck with the weather next time. Absolutely, and you know, who knows if they're, you know, they might need to readjust the course for, you know, the bicyclists or uh, wheelchairs, um, just to, you know, provide services that maybe aren't as much of an incline, um, you know, in case it's slick out there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I am looking forward to, because this is gonna, we're gonna be covering this live as well later, is once people start finishing the race and then they go and hang out at the, like the after party area and, you know, really reflect on their accomplishment. I, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be fun to see this morning. Well, absolutely. And you know, um, there's the Finish Line Festival that is, is very exciting. They have music, live music, they have vendors. Um, it, it's just a fun time. And even if you haven't run or haven't
haven't supported yeah. anyone um, running, you know, you can go out there and, and just be a part of the community because um, it, it's really a special event that, you know, a city has. And not all cities have marathons, so we are very lucky to have something like this. That's true. You know, it's so funny. Every time I think about wanting to join a marathon or something like this, I think about how much, I feel like it's going to be so much more stressful than, than it is. It's like, wow, really? I have to add one more thing to my schedule? But what I ta hear from a lot of people who actually run the marathon, it's their biggest stress reliever in their lives. Absolutely. That the exercise helps them cope with issues that they're dealing with. And, and that's what Becky from Sierra Fitness was talking about, how, you know, the, the running part may be just the easier part of, you know, being able to relax, let go of your thoughts. Um, you know, once you get into that mode of exercising, it's something that you want because it's a way to, you know, kind of uh, think about the, your day, think about what stressed you out, and just let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's great that Pasadena has a marathon like this. From working and volunteering here for all these years, I know that Pasadena cares about quality of life, and exercise certainly is one part that improves the quality of lives of people here in this town. Absolutely, and you know, you just see, um, I think it was rated as one of the, you know, most bike-friendly cities. Um, and it, you just see that that has been growing as well, just seeing more bikers out there. And it's very exciting since uh, this is the start of Bike to Work Week. Uh, do you plan to bike to work at all? Is that something you do? I normally work at 6 a.m. and oh. I know that's not an excuse to not go bicycling into work. I don't think I'm ready to commit to something like that. I, but you know what, when I'm driving home and it takes me an hour to drive through traffic, it's really a strong motivator that maybe we, you know, maybe taking up the bike won't be such a bad idea. Well, you know, when you think about um, Los Angeles, there's really not that many miles, you know, from one end to the next mm -hmm. of this huge city. Um, but, you know, it's just the traffic that we get stuck in. Oh, yeah, and a lot of crazy people on the road, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. <laughs> so, well, we're going to take a short break here, um, but we are going to be back with more coverage of the Pasadena Marathon when we return. Thank you for watching. You're watching CCN Crown City News, your news, your neighborhood. We'll be right back. Hey there. Hi. I haven't seen you before. Yeah, I just moved here. I'm new. Wanna hang out or something? Um. Cause I have a feeling we're gonna be best friends. Things can get pretty ugly when you're bored. In an after school program, you can find something way better to do. Jonesy Kitty, Jonesy Kitty, Jonesy Cat. She's my kitty. She's my squiddy. She's my Jonesy. She's my Jonesy Cat. She's my cat. Things can get pretty ugly when you're born. In an after school program, you can find something way better to do. can get pretty ugly when you're bored. In an after school program, you can find something way better to do. Hello there. Having a lasting effect on a kid's life can be quick and easy. Here's some stuff we've learned. From time to time, secret codes may be used. It's not uncommon for a kid to demonstrate special powers. Costumes can be uncomfortable, but loads of fun. Moments like these happen every day. Lend your support. Go to bigbrothersbigsisters.org. That's all for now. Uh, 
Well, we hope there won't be any runners who need to make use of the services, but with a title sponsor like Kaiser, you know you're going to get the great medical care if anything happens during the race. Kaiser has five state-of-the-art military-type tents, the kind you saw on the TV show MASH. That include power, lighting, heating, and all for all medical situations. These tents are used as training grounds for disaster relief efforts. CCN's Nikki Ibarra talked to Kaiser's Regional Director of Event Medicine, Dr. Thad Woodward, to find out more. I'm here at the Employee Wellness Center at Kaiser Permanente Southern California Regional Headquarters in Pasadena with Andy Gallardo. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Now, Andy, why did Kaiser Permanente decide to sponsor, to become the title sponsor of the um, Pasadena Marathon? Sure. Well, um, a couple things. Number one, this is our Southern California corporate headquarters, so we wanted to be good neighbors and good partners with the city of Pasadena and support events um, literally right in our backyard. And two, it just was a great way to really practice what we preach and really get the health prevention message out there. And there's no better way to, to get, get out there and get active than running and walking. Now, there are many programs that Kaiser offers, especially to their employees. Can you talk about the workforce wellness program that Kaiser offers? Sure. So what we try to do at Kaiser Permanente is find programs that get people excited to get um, physical activity into their lives and also make better food choices. So we work with all of our cafeterias and our vendors to get healthy food. We do a lot of programs at our hospitals and medical centers where we have employee contests and programs for them to lose weight, have a walking club, start a yoga class. You name it, we've got something for just about everybody in the organization. So not only does this organization help people stay healthy and, you know, maintain their health, but, you know, you offer programs for your employees, you know, to live that message that they're trying to convey to, you know, patients. Right. Well, it has to start with us as the employee and as the physician. Um, we have to really practice what we preach. Otherwise, the message is lost. We can't go out and tell people to be active if we're not living that lifestyle ourselves. So it's really important that we have this program in place. Now, can you talk about the Every Everybody Walk program as well? Sure. So, um, you know, one of the easiest things to do for physical activity is walk. So we have a program in place where you can coordinate with your friends and with family and kind of walk kind of against one another so you can log your mileage in your hours and your minutes, see how your friends are doing, and kind of use that as inspiration to keep moving every day. Now, in this room here, we see a well, as you notice, that was uh, the workplace wellness segment. Uh, we will have the uh, medical tents because that is a really exciting thing. Uh, but first, we're going to go out into the field with Luna Petty, who has a biker um, who is has finished the race and is there to talk to her. Luna, are you there? Hi, Luna. Well, it looked like we had a little bit of audio problems, but we'll uh, take care of that um, in just a few minutes, and we'll go back to Luna Petty. Um, so at this point, we are just, we have uh, Dr. Z still here. So Dr. Z, come on back. Let's, <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about fitness and nutrition and all of that, because all of these things go together with, uh, you know, getting in shape and uh, community wellness and all of that. Yes. Um, yeah, so it, it is very, I'm really happy to see so many people getting involved because we have about 350 million people in America and about over half of those people are in really bad shape. So it's just so exciting, not only for the people to get involved, but all the different experts that, that have come onto the show and people that are involved with um, uh, the different ways for other people to get involved because it's not just the way, there's many ways to get involved with fitness and health. So I'm happy, uh, it's very wonderful to see. Absolutely. Now I wanted to ask you a little bit about, uh, you had talked about food and you know knowing what you eat, that kind of thing. Um, what do you think about, you know, a lot of, um, there's now coming, you know, legislation for restaurants to post their calories, their fat, all of that. Do you think that is um, necessary for, you know, diners to make a choice on what they're eating? 
I, th I think that it's going to be, uh, it's going to appear that it's being more responsible, but it's only going to appeal to those people that are responsible. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want that responsibility, and that's the biggest problem that we have in the United States is that we want to eat uh, irresponsibly because yeah. that feels good. It, it tastes good. It's like, I don't want to know, just I want to eat. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, it, by having those ingredients list, listed, I think that shows like, yeah, responsibility, but remember even on cigarettes it says warning, this could, uh, this could be uh, toxic to your child on wine and uh, alcoholic beverages, there's a warning. It doesn't stop anything. Absolutely, and you know, I guess the whole goal is just uh, moderation as we talk, but I do have a story with that. You know, I love going to eat fast food when I go on road trips. It's my, you know, special little treat. Yeah. Um, and I stopped at this one uh, fast food joint, and I basically ordered the biggest burger on the menu. You know, I had the bacon and then the guacamole, and you know, it just sounded so good. And I ordered it guilt-free, didn't worry about it. But then as I was waiting for it, I started looking at their charts and started seeing that it, I think it had about 1,500 calories or more. Um, that was gonna be my lunchtime meal. And I was like, that's basically my whole calories for the day. There's no way to make that up. Yeah. There's no way I can just eat a salad or even you know lettuce, um, yeah. basically, to make up for those calories. Yeah, that, that's, that's very true. The, Again, irresponsible eating. Um, you going out on a trip and doing it every once in a while, you know, that's, that's a treat. But what happens is, is most citizens eat like that daily. Mm -hmm. uh, those are emergency foods. But people, they, they don't prepare foods anymore. They don't use their knife to cut the, the watermelon or the cantaloupe or the, you know, they don't pick the grapes and so forth. So you have uh, many of these uh, different diseases and illnesses because it's convenient. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, mm -hmm. and uh, we may be coming back to you again to join okay, our conversation. <laughs> okay, well, for now, we are going to check in with our weather with Anthony Smilkovich. Um, you know, the weather has been changing. What do we have coming up for this next hour? Hey, Sunitha. Uh, so I hope we get to keep the doctor around because I want to ask him one more quick question. A question about if you're not supposed to eat an hour before you go to bed. I know Oprah and all these other people who are, you know, heavily into the weight loss thing, they talk about not going to eat before an hour before you go to bed, and I do that every once in a while. But now we're going to take a look at the weather because it is right now 55 degrees outside, and that is a good temperature for the people who are running in the marathon today. However, it's not good news for people who are riding the bicycle uh, and in the wheelchairs because it's also raining outside. The humidity is at 71%, and the bare metric pressure is at 29.89 degrees. Let's take a look at the overnight temperatures, what it was like getting ready for the, the, uh, the route today. Glendale is 51 degrees, Pasadena was 51. So it was pretty chilly all over the San Gabriel Valley region overnight. 49 in Arcadia and 49 in Monrovia. And let's take a look at what the temperatures are gonna be like later on today. The neighborhood highs, Glendale 65, Monterey Park 65, Alhambra 65, mostly as you see everything's in the 60s. Lovely Naomi's head is, she's trying, to, she's trying to jump in on my weather report. You know what, Naomi, this one's mine. You'll get yours later. All right, <laughs> one more. Let's take a look at that satellite. The satellite is coming up right here. You can see this was the storm coming in early this morning when we grabbed the satellite picture. You can see that flow coming in, the, the cold front making its way into the Southern California area. And real quick, let's take a look at what the rest of the week is gonna look like. Oh, you want Naomi? We're, I have to share the spotlight with, with our Hello. lovely Naomi. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good, and you? How was it doing your first weather report? Oh, I was nervous at first, but then I was wonderful at the end. Yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's do the seven-day forecast together, okay? So okay. how does the first part of the week, including today, look? So today there's going to be a 60% chance of rain. And as you can see for Monday and Wednesday, 20%, and Tuesday, 60% chance. Okay, one more tip I'm gonna give you. Remember to always keep your eye on the camera as much as you can, because people like it when you look at them right in the okay. eyes. So. <laughs> eyes. <laughs> All right, take it away. Give us the rest of the forecast here. Okay, as you can see, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, temperatures are gonna be rising up, and there's gonna be a beautiful, marvelous good job, weekend. Good job. <laughs> 
And Sunita, back to you. Well, thank you both for that, uh, that very unique weather report. You're not going to see that at other stations. No, you're not. Well, apparently running in marathons can get a little addicting. CCN's LaKendra Tooks um, is actually, before we go to uh, an amazing woman that she talked to, we're going to go to her live at PCC, um, and, and she has some special people that she's talking to right now. What do you have for us, LaKendra? LaKendra, are you there? He's here for sound support. Sound support systems. Oh, okay, cool then. Great. Sounds awesome. Sounds necessary. I'm just kidding. Sound I like it. He's lead guitar. Okay. I'm lead singer. Okay. Sounds like LaKendra. Thanks, Anita. I am here with a couple of members of the band core. Now, they usually perform here at the Pasadena Marathon, but... They kind of got their parade rained on a little bit today. Um, so tell us a little bit about your band, Todd. Well, we've been playing here at the Pasadena Marathon since its inception in 09. And I think it's rained at least twice since we've been here. It got smoked out once by the fires a few years ago and delayed. But we show up anyway because we love to play, don't we, Gary? We love it. We love to play and we do bring the rain. No, I don't know if that's the best thing. <laughs> I don't know. Stop. Doing that. Maybe, maybe we're going to make a tour of drought nations, you know, so that we can uh, yeah. bring rain to them as well. You guys should go to, like, Liberia. Exactly, exactly. Well, we uh, have a lot of fun playing here, and we love to play at these kind of events. We played at the L.A. Marathon. We played various Relay for Lives around town. And uh, it just makes us feel good to support good causes like the Pasadena Marathon and the Relay for Life Cancer Fundraisers. And hopefully we put a little spring in the runner's steps as they come through. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to ask you. What, what is it about the Pasadena Marathon that makes you want to keep coming back every year? It's just fun. It's a great event. The organizers are awesome. They always provide a really nice stage for us, even though sometimes the elements uh, conspire against us. Um, and the people are great. We love the city of Pasadena, and we just love to play music. So that's, this is how we share our music. This is, this is kind of our community service. Sounds great. All right. Thank you so much, Core. And hopefully next year you guys won't get rained out. Back to you in the studio.